do I have audio now? <laughs> do I'm seeing that I have audio. Are we, are we good? Hmm. Okay. Are we, are, can you guys just someone? Okay, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to raise this. So it's a little bit closer to me. Um, okay. I don't know. I'm really sorry guys that we lost audio. <laughs> um, I'm not going to go back to what I was saying. Cause I have no idea what I was saying. Um, I'm so confused what just happened. I just started a new stream. I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out one of these days, but for now, we're going to go to your questions. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. I'm going to give it just a second here. I'm going to look through my list um, of the questions that I have have queued up for me here. Lost three minutes. Uh, I lost the idea at the 40 minute mark. I don't know what I was saying. None of this is scripted. Someone, someone in chat, let me know what had I just said? What was I talking about? Was I talking about, um, was I on to the men having affairs yet? Cause like we can go over that again real quick. Did you hear me talking about affairs? Man affairs? Man affairs? <laughs> We'll take questions. No, did not. Hi. I've been talking for a while. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. I don't know what I, I didn't, like, I moved the microphone a lot more last week. And all, all I did was start a new stream. I didn't do anything to the mic, which is so weird. So, okay. Um, on the plus side, I'm going to take all the feedback to YouTube because that was, it was very unclear to me how you fix that. I couldn't like select another mic. Um, okay. So I guess we'll start the question period again. Sorry guys. Um, if you do have questions, I've got, I've got some people helping curate questions so you can leave them in the chat. I'm just going to take a quick look at Twitter and see if anything's popped up there. Um, but what I had, had been saying when I lost audio, um, actually I'm going to, uh, I can't even share. Can I, oh, good. I can share the new link on the Twitters. Let's do that real quick. Um, so what I was saying when we got when we got super sidetracked by me completely losing audio um, was that, you know, we talk about how Jerry's affair, all of them except John Glenn did. John Glenn was, he, reading about him and Annie Glenn is like the hugest thing ever. They met when they were three and four years old. And, um were together for 72 years and they were just kind of like the sweetest oh is my my internet my connection is unstable <sighs> how am i sounding am i still am i still okay someone let me know it's lagging i'll sh i'll twist this way a little bit that little blob is pete <laughs> um, sorry, I got a notification that my internet was, was messy. It's been, it's been a little bit wonky today. Uh, blame the rain. I don't know. Um, so yeah, the men, the, the male astronauts were having affairs left, right and center. So it's not like this is uncommon for someone in the, in the era to, to have something on the side. I mean, who knows? So I don't want to speculate too much on sort of the nature of the affair. I can't, um, I can't because it's, there's, there's so many factors and there are so few things, um, so few like firm sources on anything. Um, yeah, it's been a little bit, it's been, this one's been really tough to track down. I hit the mic. Let me make sure I didn't lose my audio. Okay. We're still good. Um, okay. I'm going to get to your questions in just a second. Um, new link for the Q and A because I lost sound. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, okay. Let's look at some of the questions you guys had. Um, let's see. Okay, so right, we're just going through. Uh, Corey, Corey didn't ask so much as said, um, 
just looked at the Wikipedia article on Jerry. It needs to be changed. It needs to be updated so badly. <laughs> there is so, so much. Um, so many things in that are just like, there shouldn't be an article about the Mercury 13. There should not be a lot of things about that story the way they are on Wikipedia. Then again, it's Wikipedia. You take it with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, I should probably go in there and update it. That, that would be a thing that I should do. <laughs> um, but good call. It does need to be massively changed. Um, the title of the play about Jackie and Jerry that kind of has a throwaway mention that he's married. Um, oh, what was it called? I think it was they, I think it's called They Promised Her the Moon. Um, and it's based, it's based very heavily on a book called uh, Promise the Moon by Stephanie Nolan, which I um which is a book that is very much like the Jerry camp. Um, we can talk about other books. Um, we can talk about other books on this topic on another day. I don't want to spend too much time on it right now, but Promise the Moon, I think, is the the most uh, romantic, romanticized maybe retelling of the story and that it's, it's like it's the feminist epic that you want it to be that it absolutely wasn't. Um, I, I find that that book frustrating. <laughs> um, and, you know, that it feels like a lot of the stories that are told are based on that because it's a very readable book, but it's also just it gives you the story you want it to be. And it's just not it's not what that story is by any stretch. Um If you guys want to update the Wikipedia article, actually, go for it. I am your source. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, don't know who asked the question. Could uh, Mary's baby have been her first husband's because she married Jack so quickly after he disappeared? Um I think it's unlikely, and I, I this is me speculating. Uh, it's, I think it's unlikely because of the time frame. If he disappeared, he disappeared in October of 1942, and she married, um, she married Jack 15 months later. That means she would have a. Th I, I can't math. She'd have. I mean, she would have to have. She'd have a. You know, potentially a. a she'd have an infant or a year old baby or a. You know close to year old baby um, when she got married, which seems like something that you wouldn't have when you were working as a pilot overseas flying for the military. Um, I feel like there would have been, that would have been something to try to avoid. And I, I would be surprised if it was actually her first husband's just because the timing seems really, really, uh, really messy. Um, yeah. How big was Mary Ford's public profile? Um, not huge, and it's still not huge. Um, I I have a hard time finding anything about her. I think the name Ford is just such a uh, is just such a common name, especially when you're in America and cars. Uh, so yeah, it's I don't know how big her public profile was. I think more the two of them had a bit of a public profile as a couple. I have some articles or pictures in the article that I shared with you guys, uh, the one that I put up today or last night on Medium, uh, showing Jack and Mary uh, with Lana Turner and Jeff Chandler. So they had some publicity around the movie coming out about them. And yeah, I think that I think that was the bulk of like their kind of especially her being kind of like a known person was surrounding this movie, but the movie didn't do very well from what I can tell. It didn't have any like huge, huge name stars. This was, I think it was, I was looking at it yesterday. I think it was Lana Turner right after she got out of a big contract and she wasn't the huge, uh, the huge draw of a movie star that she had been previously. Um, and like, it's not on any streaming service, so you can find it on YouTube, but you can't actually find, you can't rent it. You can't, it's, it's a tough one. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I, I just, I think that between, between like them being famous in like a small world and then it not going very much. Um, yeah, she didn't have like the biggest of public profiles. 
Um, I see I have a lot of comments in here about my mic. I think we're still okay about my audio. It looks like it's still green. Um, was I able to find anyone in connection with the daughter that presumably is still alive? Um, and I found someone else asking about if I could figure out her age. Um, no, I she so the article that I found, I was able to find a couple of pieces that Mary either wrote or worked with an author for kind of like out of history or military history or aviation history um, where she just mentions that she's living with her daughter. She doesn't actually give her daughter's name potentially likely to protect her privacy. Um, so yeah, an unnamed daughter of a Mary Ford born sometime in the 1950s is like a very hard uh, person to find. And I, I honestly, I haven't done the deep gene genealogical research. Um, we'll talk about the genealogical research I did for Jackie when we get into the episode or book tour stop on uh, on on my research process. Um, but I, I, I haven't been able to find, nor have I done a whole lot of digging. Um, that would be a really hard one, largely because it's such a common name and I don't have a, a pinpointed date. I don't even necessarily know where uh, where she would have given birth. So looking for women named Mary who gave birth within the mid to late 1950s um, in America. That's a big one. Um, yeah, so that's fun. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you guys, I'm seeing, again, lots of things about audio that I can ignore. Ah. Um, let's see. More, okay. Uh, Ray, Ray asked if I can talk about any interview that I did with Jerry. Um, I didn't actually get a chance to speak to Jerry. Um, when I started working on this book, she she. Oh, I can't math. Um, she she was in her late 80s when I started writing the book, mid to late 80s. And um, she was very much a notorious recluse. That I've known for a long time. She even discusses in both of her memoirs. I'll put these up again if anybody missed it. But these are her two memoirs. Um, she discusses how when she kind of felt her second love was taken away from her, her, her dream of flying in space, um, she kind of went into recluse mode because she felt like she'd lived so much of her life publicly and wanted to kind of go back um, to just kind of spending time alone in a hut on the beach somewhere. So she ended up living largely between Florida and South America doing missionary work. And uh, even, even a lot of, a lot, there's some questions surrounding the extent of her missionary work, but that's neither, neither here nor there. Um, she did come back in the 90s to try for another flight into space after John Glenn flew as a senior citizen. She tried to make the argument that data from two seniors is better than data from one senior. Therefore, um, fly me in space didn't work. And uh, yeah, so I, I knew she was reclusive. I knew she was hard to get a hold of. And um, I also knew that the people that I know who may have a contact with her, she comes with a very strict do not disturb order. So I had asked a couple friends that had contacts for her. I got a, a, an email address and a phone number. And um, I, I wanted to try to go through somebody who was more of a personal friend before coming at it as a, as a writer researcher. Um, and I had a friend who was willing to send, forward my email to her and if she didn't want to talk to me, ask questions on my behalf. Um, and I'd sent I'd sent this person some questions, and uh, then Jerry passed. Um, so unfortunately, I never got a chance to speak to her or um, get anything directly from her. What I was able to do was actually a friend of mine uh, interviewed her extensively in the '90s for a book section that he wrote, and uh, was able to read his correspondence with her. So that was actually really interesting to get some of her own words and some of her own experiences um, to to kind of flesh out some things that were not in her memoirs. So that was was interesting, but that was unfortunately as close as I got. Um, I did speak to. Let me see if I can pop this link in the in the chat here. Um, I did get to speak to Janora Jessen, who was another one of the the women who did some of the training or the uh, medical testing. As with <laughs> another one of the women, here are the words. Another one of the women um, 
who did the medical astronaut testing after Jerry. Uh, and she had some interesting things to say. And a lot of it is in this article that I have just shared with you guys. Okay. Um, going through, going through. Uh, I see someone uh, asked about the black and white picture that is on the credenza behind me. Um, I'll grab that and show you guys because it's cool. Um, see if I can get this without the glare of the light that's on my desk here. So that's Jackie. That's Jackie. Um, after she won, <laughs> it's really hard. Um, after she won the 1938 Bendix. So that was the first Bendix that she won. The only one she won, um, her third time flying in it. And, uh, that's her shaking hands with Vincent Bendix after the race. And this is a, this is a, what is it? 1967, a 1967 stamp cover. Um, cause Signed pictures of Jackie are very hard to find, actually. I have a couple that I should probably put one in this frame, but I wanted a signed picture, so I just put these two things together. I have a similar one. I should do a, a, a memorabilia tour for you guys one of these days because I have a similar one of Pete Conrad where I have a picture of Pete and then a uh, $20 check he sent to AT&T that he signed, um, and I bought on eBay for, like, 20 bucks. <laughs> Such a weird thing, but I love that. Um Okay, so speaking of the women, uh, so speaking of the uh, the women who took the medical astronaut testing, someone asked if I've read uh, Wally Funk's Race for Space by Sue Nelson. Um, I have not. Uh, I've, I, I kind of picked at it a little bit, um, but I haven't read the whole thing. It, I, I kind of looked through it to see if there's anything relevant to uh, the discussion of her astronaut testing or taking the medical test. She did the psychological testing as well. Um, if she had anything to say, Wally, interestingly, also uh, submitted her or submitted her application to be an astronaut twice um, after NASA opened its astronaut corps to women and um, never got in. She was always lacking some some element of uh of the of the application she didn't have the right degree she didn't have enough experience um so i was kind of looking to see if there's anything relevant in the book and uh frankly i, I haven't heard the best things about it um so it's not the highest on my to read list right now to be totally honest um i've got other books that i are are uh, closer closer to the top of my to read pile um Okay, we're going through, we're going through. Sorry, guys, I am looking through the questions. Um, did I watch, Samuel asked if I watched the launch and dock this morning. Um, nope. <laughs> I, I did not. I have nothing more to say about that. Um, I did not. Um, okay. No, oh, so on technical note, I'm just going to say this. Um, Corey suggested that I can do a screen sharing with OBS. If you can find me a guide that makes OBS usable, I will try it. But I've tried it, and it is just not something that I could ever make work, actually. That's why I used to do live streams on my phone, because the interface on your phone is a lot easier to use than going through OBS. OBS, for some reason, has always been problematic for me. It killed every live stream I tried to make public for ages. And I finally, YouTube has a different interface now that actually works. Um, OK, I think we're, unfortunately, we are getting out of the relevant questions. Um, sorry, trying to just grab all the ones that are relevant. And then we'll go through the kind of hodgepodge of things real quick. Um, OK. Um, All right. Uh, Josh asked um, where Sally Ride ranks on my list of women pioneers. Um, I don't really have a list of women pioneers um, per se. I, I have women that I am personally more interested in digging out uh, little you know, bits and pieces of. I have women that I'm sort of less keen on just because I'm the same way that I've just like never been a shuttle person. I find certain things just more exciting. I Sally Ride is is there, and for me, she's high on the list because she's the first woman 
the first American woman in space and her story and how, how she got there is an interesting one. But I, I don't have like a, a Sally Ride biography in my house. I don't really know too, too much about her specifically. I'm sort of my interest in Sally Ride is more looking at the changing uh, astronaut requirements and kind of where she fits into that and why she was maybe the right person to be um, to be the first woman that NASA decided to launch uh, into space. So that's kind of where, where she kind of sits on that list for me. Um, okay. Someone asked, uh, were any of the male astronauts sym sympathetic to there being female astronauts? We are getting to that in a future episode. So I'm going to hold on to that question, but it is something that I do want to discuss because it's actually really, really interesting. And I, uh, I want to, yeah, like actually spend time on that and do some research about that specifically. Um, have I seen uh, the Imperial War Museum's DVD Fairy Pilot featuring the all the Atta Girls? Um, I have not. Um, I've done a little bit. I have done a little bit of, uh, of digging into the Atta Girls um, and the Atta program in general. It is all in here. And it was actually the hardest part of the book to write all the World War II stuff because it is, there's so much happening and there's so many players and like, there's books written about pilots in Second World War, obviously. There's books about the Atta Girls. There's books about the Atta Program. There's books about the Wasps. There's so much happening. Um, I just saw a question come in um, about the Night Witches, which are the, the Soviet uh, women pilots, because the Soviet Union had no problem having women flying in combat in the Second World War. There's so much, and like distilling it down was the hardest thing I think I had to do to write this book. And it was, yeah, it was like the biggest challenge. So many flashcards. We're actually gonna discuss uh, the wasps separately. Um, in another episode. So I'll save a lot of the discussion about that. But needless to say, there were a lot of cue cards with dates color coded by people of events and places and like trying to figure out like how everything overlaps. Because you know, a proposal can come up and it can be acted upon months or years later. And it's just like it just became this like huge mess of things trying to keep everything straight. And it was definitely really, really tough to kind of make that um, kind of keep everything together but also like make it readable and narrative which were the two biggest things I wanted to do with this book readable narrative <laughs> okay let me okay um had a more of a comment. Um, pretty sure Mary knew about Jerry. All of the names overlapping is going to get me at some point that Mary knew about Jerry and wonder if it had an outward effect on their business relationship. Don't know. I mean, it's very possible that they, that that's one of the reasons they're, I, I don't know. I mean, I can, I can speculate on this stuff so wildly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible that the affair was the that the affair had an effect on the marriage or the mar the marriage was um or that the marriage was uh the marriage was failing and that kind of allowed for the affair to happen um so it's yeah i can i can't i can't say i can only i can only speculate very wildly <laughs> Um, okay. Do I a couple, all right. We got a couple of good ones that just came in. Um, we're going to stop taking questions soon because I have a huge list in front of me. Um, I've got three that are very, um, very good ones. And then I will take a few of the kind of super random ones very quickly before we end the stream. Um, okay. Did Jackie's husband mind her having friendships with male pilots? Uh, no, <laughs> not, uh, not that I've found any evidence of. So Jackie was, um, Jackie was very much a boy's girl. I would describe her as a boy's girl. She, and, and I think in part, it wasn't that she was necessarily better friends with men. I think it's that she, she preferred to have 
powerful friends. She preferred to have friends who could help her in some way, um, like Eisenhower, like Lyndon Johnson, like Hap Arnold. And she she knew the value of those friends. And just by virtue of her living and working in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, the people who were in a position to help her financially, uh, with her career, with her politics, their flying, whatever, they were all going to be men. And I think... I think a lot of times she and her husband Floyd, we can talk about them at length in another episode. There's so many, so many things for future topics um, that Floyd is also friends with these, with these people. So they would, you know, these people that would stay, uh, stay at the house, you know, Floyd was friends with Hap. Floyd was good friends. They were good friends with the Eisenhowers. Um, I've got pictures of LBJ and Lady Bird at arthritis society dinners that was Floyd's baby because he was crippled by arthritis towards the end of his life. So there's a lot of, of overlap with Jackie's powerful male friends and her husband. Um, he, they, like, there is a, words are hard. <laughs> when, uh, when Jackie learned how to fly through the sound barrier, Chuck Yeager was her teacher. And Floyd facilitated all of the financial elements of all of that, including paying Jaeger specifically, separate from his Air Force uh, paycheck, to train Jackie. Jackie moved into the Jaeger's house to be closer to the base um, with Floyd. Jaeger moved into barracks on the base. And Glennis Yeager moved into Jackie's house. <laughs> it was a very complicated arrangement that facilitated Jackie flying the way Jackie wanted to because Floyd had the money to pay everybody. Um, so yeah, very different situation, but similar. Okay, um, Dan asked if I consider Jerry to be an unreliable narrator. <sighs> I think everybody who writes a memoir is on some level unreliable because you want your memoir to do something specific. Um, both Jackie and Jerry, I don't have Jackie's memoirs on hand right now, but both Jackie and Jerry wrote their wrote two memoirs. Uh, the first one early in their earlier in their lives. Oh, here's one. So Jackie's memoir. Um, it's in a bag. <laughs> the stars at noon. She wrote this uh, in 1954 because she was uh, she was getting ready to do a run for a congressional seat in her district. So she wanted to have the book out so that it would be you know everyone would know her story and it could promote her public image when running for office. Jerry wrote her book to try to convince people to convince NASA to let her fly in space. So I think. I, and I talked about this in the author's note a little bit, and we can. I, um, I want to talk about this more when I discuss my research, because it's you have to take both of their memoirs and their stories with a grain of salt, because it's so hard to say like you're you're saying things that I know are true, but you know the conversations you're remembering, you might be putting words in someone's mouth, but you're my source, you're all I have, but you also might be overstating your importance in a meeting because. It was you and one other person, and there's no one left alive who can verify it. Like Jackie and her, or Jerry and her affair with Jack. All the J names. Um, so it gets really, it gets really tough to figure out, like, how much do you, how much can you believe them? And where do you draw the line? And how much do you let them speak for themselves? Which was really, it was, a, it was an interesting consideration, which I talk about in the, um, in the preface or the author's note a bit. Um, did I ever get to talk to Jaeger about Jackie? No, I emailed his website. <laughs> that was the best I could do. Um, that was the best I could do. I emailed his website asking a couple of very pointed questions about Jackie, specifically um, about when he taught her to fly through the sound barrier because that's the big kind of vignette of her life that I put in the book. And um, I believe his daughter is running his website. Um and uh, I never, I never heard back. I followed up, and I, I never heard back. I figure he's got a lot of requests, and I'm kind of a rando coming in, so I unfortunately never heard back. He discusses her in his memoirs, though, so I was able to to get get it that way. Um, yeah, but you can buy signed Chuck Yeager pictures on his website. He will respond to that because I have one. <laughs> um,
Speaking, okay, Ray asked, I'm actually going to save this one for another day because I think this fits in better uh, on a later topic. Um, speaking of distilling, as you're weaving the stories of Jackie and Jerry, can you compare and contrast their technical abilities? Um, I'm going to save that one because they are very different technical abilities. Um, the analogy you could kind of make um, so Jerry flew, we'll talk about it a little bit, but I have more on this later. Um, Jerry won some, some awards and earned some records in propeller planes. Jackie was flying jets. So a lot of this is, a lot of this is a, to make a very crude analogy, it's like Jerry is doing a daily commute and Jackie is uh, driving in NASCAR and Jerry thinks that she's done a lot of commuting. Therefore she thinks she can drive in NASCAR, but it's a completely different skill set. Um, that's the crude quick way of, um, of kind of comparing and contrasting their two abilities. Something I, I, I want to get into more again with discussing research and kind of how, how to piece their stories together. I had the challenge of trying to figure out how to, make it clear to the reader that they were in different, completely different leagues. Um, they were in completely different leagues as pilots. That's for sure. Um, okay, let me blast through some of these. My page is not scrolling. There it goes. Let me blast through some of these questions. Um, how am I with all the coronavirus stuff? I'm good. I work from home anyways with Pete, so we're hanging out. <laughs> um, Arcade Dad asks if this is my first book. This is my second book, uh, Breaking the Chains. I'm sorry, I really hope I don't lose my sound again because I'm about to lift up the mic very carefully. I'm scared of touching it now. Yoink. Uh, looks like we still have green little bars. We're good. This is my first book, Breaking the Chains of Gravity. It is the story of spaceflight before NASA and kind of how all the pieces of the space agency, A, existed before we had a space agency, and B, were brought together into a space agency. Um... Ooh, Michael asked about the difference in writing style between the two books. I feel like I should say a little something about that. Um, different, it's really hard for me as the writer to discuss that um, because I obviously, um, I like both of them. I like this one more. <laughs> I, well, I do, I like this one more. Um, with Breaking the Chains, I, I this one to me feels more academic. I tried to kind of introduce chapters with little stories to kind of bring you into the narrative a bit more, but then I have to tell you what happened. In this one, I had a lot, a lot more, uh, I think I had more interesting source material to work from. Uh, a lot of letters, a lot of interviews, a lot of stuff. I, I mean, I was able to travel more to research this book, we'll talk about that in the research episode. Um, and this book, I try really, really tried to write in a way that would feel like you're reading a novel. Um, and it's, it's, a uh, yeah, this this feels to me it's more academic. Um, this one feels more like a novel, and that's some of the feedback I'm getting from people, which is which is good, which is exactly what I was going for. Um, Ray just said that my blending and weaving of Jackie and Jerry is great in chapters seven and eight. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> um, okay, Mike asked if I have a pilot's license. I do not. Oh, one of these days I will. I don't ever want to fly like a jet or anything. I just want to fly like a little Cessna just to learn how to do it. Uh, California is a great place. So one of these days I will do it. Um, it is very expensive. <laughs> Last I looked into it, it's been ages. Um, but yeah, so one day. Um, my favorite thing about space, don't know. Uh, Corey, uh, no, sorry, that was my, no, wait, I'm losing it. Okay, Steven asked, what's your favorite thing about space? Mine is space. Space is a good thing about space. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a firm answer on that one. Um, uh, am I going to play Final Fantasy VII when it comes out? I am, I am not. Someone also, I saw someone say that my, you can see my, uh, PS4 controller back there. It's not. It's a Switch Pro controller. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I'm going to play tonight. Don't know what yet. Um, favorite music right now? Something that is comforting me? I'm doing a lot of 1930s pop music. I do that a lot. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Al Boley. He was actually killed in the Second World War when the building next to his was bombed, um, which is quite sad, but he has an amazing catalog and just that like perfect 1930s crooner voice. I listened to a lot of that. I listened to a lot of that when I was writing. Um, do I have dual citizenship? I do. Thanks, mom born in America. 
Um, my necklace is an airplane. People ask about this all the time and ask me what kind of plane it is and speculate that it's a DC three, which I don't think it looks at all. Like it's a, it's a, it's just a charm. It's just a charm. The, the props move. I think it's cute. <laughs> um, it's nothing. It's not, it's not a specific plane. Um, am I optimistic about the future of space exploration? It seems so far fetched given the issues of climate change and rising populism. Um, that's a big one. <sighs> yes, and yes, with like a furrowed brow. Um, I think I think we have unrealistic expectations of what space exploration could and should be. Um, we kind of have this idea that space exploration should be, you know, these multi generational human missions to Neptune and all this stuff. So it's it's kind of. We're not there yet. I don't think we're quite close to human missions to Mars just yet. It's closer, but not, not yet. Um, I think we need, I think what we honestly need is, um, is like a more long-term vision in space because so much of space is just like, here's what we can do in my administration. Here's a quick goal that I can win when it has to go beyond administration politics. And that's a problem. So until we kind of get beyond what I do as the person in charge to what can I set up for humanity and have it be a true legacy, that would be, yeah, I think that's what needs to change. Um, great couch. Is it vintage? It is not. It is from West Elm, but it looks vintage. Almost all my furniture is vintage. The desk that you guys can't see is vintage. The credenza is definitely vintage. I love that. Um, I have some, I have some pretty cool vintage furniture and, um, some not vintage bookshelves that hold a lot of vintage things. <laughs> um, so any record? Uh, looking through questions. I have a couple. Have I met any of the original NASA computers, the women who were doing all the computational stuff uh, before we had like physical IBM machines doing it. I have not. Um, I have not. And a lot of, I get a lot of questions about them since Hidden Figures came out, frankly. I get a ton of questions about the computers. And um, God, I just I just don't know enough about computing history to really speak to it. I, I know they were humans doing calculations. Um, I just don't come from a, a strong math background to kind of understand where the the intersection of the human computers and, and technical technology machine computers comes in it's I have a I have a hard time with that one just because me and com, I don't have the background for it one of these days maybe I'll dive in and really really get into it but a, a lot of it is stuff that's just um the stuff they were working on calculating trajectories I mean that's that's so far from what I know how to do with numbers which is not much um okay Oh, Ray, I, f I saw Ray Ray leave. Have a good second Seder. Um, as an editor, I would say you're much more narrative with fighting for space and factual with breaking the chains. Um, I would I would say that's probably a fair assessment of these two books. Um, although I will say there is nothing not factual in here. <laughs> the only things that are not factual is me letting Jerry's romance story live when I have discussed that we take it with a grain of salt. Had to, wanted to get it in there for, uh, you know, many reasons. Um, Okay, I did see a question. Where did I buy the necklace? The the charm is just from Tiffany's. It was a uh, eight years ago. Um, don't know. Is she she? Yeah. Uh, there's there's no good backstory beyond it. Beyond it came from my grandma. Um, I think it was a birthday present. But yeah, it's still there. You can get it. <laughs> um, I saw someone just ask. Corey asked, "Can I do a, a KSP stream with Scott Manley?" We used to do them, but we didn't do them live. I suck at KSP. I'm really bad at it. Just really bad. I like. I don't even enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I I do not. I do not totally enjoy it. Is there a good reason? Uh, I haven't asked. Is there a good reason in the near term to go back to the moon other than politics? laying a foundation for spaceflight, starting to build a base so we can go from the moon to other places so we can mine it for resources to make fuel. Will we do that? Probably not because it's so deeply politicized. Uh, there's a lot, a lot about that. Um, do I, technical support, thank you, <laughs> asked if I want to go into space. Suborbital, probably more realistic for me. Uh, yes, I would, I would. Only if I can come back though. Um, 
I think I think that's going to about do it. I'm seeing that I'm buffering at least the audio. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think that's going to about do it for the stream today, guys. Um, let me give you the information uh, that I see a lot of people asking about the books. So, I mean, we've been talking about it, so I'll throw it out there. Um, Breaking the Chains of Gravity is available. It came out in 2015. Still out. Um, available wherever books are sold. I believe it's uh, all territories around the world. Um it's still there. It's a thing. The audiobook does exist. I did not read it. It is not read by me. So if you do get the audiobook, um, it's not my voice. This one, however, is in my voice. So Fighting for Space, let's talk about that. Um, Fighting for Space is available in um, Canada and the US right now. Uh, should be available in other uh, regions, international, relative to where I am. Um, not if you're in England. I don't know about international sales yet. I know you can order it on Amazon UK. I It might be really expensive to get it. I'm not sure. Um, it is available as a Kindle book as well as e-books, um, as well as an audiobook that I did narrate. Um, so if you do want to get it, you have options and uh, should be available wh wherever books are sold. I do want to just let you guys know um, a lot of local bookstores are still doing mail orders right now. Um, so now is a great time actually to support your local indie bookstores by putting your orders in through them versus Amazon. Um, I know Amazon is super convenient, but so, so many local bookstores are going to die and are at risk right now. So if you are looking to buy books, you can definitely get this through a local bookstore. Uh, Bookshop.org is actually not affiliated. I just think it's a great service. Um, you just order online like you would with Amazon, but it it ships from a local store local to you, so it supports indie bookstores, which I think is great. Um, I am not doing signed books uh, of this because it's so hard to do. Um, I, f I learned that the hard way with Breaking the Chains. Um, so unfortunately, there are no signed books, and the signed book plate was a limited offer. I might be able to bring them back if I can get more of the book plates from my publisher. Um, I'll let you guys know about that, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm not doing any signed books. Um, I would love to do events where I will, of course, sign your book for you, um, but we can't do that right now. But one of these days, come to an event when I'm in person, and I will happily sign the book. Um Okay, so I think that I think that's about it. So just uh, for those of you who don't know me, which I don't think is anybody, uh, <laughs> uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Uh, I post a lot of stuff there, a lot of book stuff. I will also, of course, be letting you know about the uh, the upcoming streams. Let me just pull up um, the schedule. So. So I will be letting you guys know about the upcoming streams, about the upcoming topics and stuff, as well as posting the articles on Twitter. So I'm just Amy Shear Title on Twitter, on Instagram, as well as on Facebook. So you can uh, follow me there to get all of the information. Uh, like I said at the beginning, this is my virtual book tour because book tours are not happening. So every week is a different facet of the book instead of the same talk at different events or different places rather. Um, today we discussed Jerry Cobb and her affair with Jack Ford and Jack Ford's wife, Mary and that's messy. Uh, next week, I am super excited about this. We are going to be talking about Bessie Pittman, who was Jackie Cochran before she became Jackie Cochran. So much good stuff in there. Um, so that's next week. On uh, April 23rd, we're going to be discussing Jacqueline Cochran Cosmetics. She had a massive cosmetics empire, and it's related to aviation because everything was aviation themed and it's so interesting how she used it as part of her flying. Um, on April 30th, we will be discussing astronaut qualifications, what was needed in the Apollo era and whether or not Jerry and company were, would ever have been qualified. Um, on uh, May 7th, we're going to be discussing my research process and kind of taking you guys through a little bit about how um, how I researched this book. And I'm going to share with some of you guys um, kind of some of the great things that I found and kind of take you through the process of like actually writing this book. 
On May 14th, we're going to be discussing details that didn't make it in the book because there's a lot of those and some really fun little stories. So that'll be more like story time with Amy. On May 25th, we're going to be discussing the Mercury astronauts on the women, um, which someone asked earlier what they thought about the idea of women astronauts. Um, I think there's a, enough to say on that that we are going to be discussing that separately. And on May 25th, or 28th rather, I can read, uh, we're going to be discussing the idea of women scientist astronauts, um, which is an interesting one. And uh, from there, we will kind of figure out what's happening with events, what's happening with, uh, you know, ev everything else in the world. And if you guys are enjoying this, and they continue to do well, we will do more episodes going into June, because I have a ton of stuff to say and a ton of fun stuff to share. And just because I saw Michael Sullivan just mentioned he has a cherry doll face cookbook coming. That's awesome, because she's great. <laughs> um, so that's the schedule for the upcoming uh, book events. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter. That's where I'm updating most of the stuff. Instagram, Facebook as well. I'm putting all that up. Uh, the Vintage Space, of course, be sure if you're not following my YouTube channel, follow it so that you get notifications when I post the articles on the community tab, as well as when the live streams go up. Um, and of course, the Vintage Space is my blog. It is currently on Medium. That's my new place. Um, be sure to follow it over there so that uh, you get the articles when they come out. Um, the other, I'm trying to think of other things to mention. Uh, one, this is a weird thing that I just started doing. I, uh, if you guys have heard of Cameo, I recently was asked to join Cameo as talent. So if you, uh, if you look for me there, I can send you a like G up little video message. So if you're keen on that, <laughs> I am now on Cameo and I can endeavor to bring Pete into a video as well. Um, and of course, guys, I do have a Patreon. Um, it's definitely like never needed. If you are able and want to support me, every dollar is so amazingly appreciated, especially now when things are a little bit tighter in terms of ability to travel and do events. Um, again, you can just look me up. It's all under my name. Um, and of course, I post everything on there as well so that you can uh, I make sure that your questions will get in. Um, I think that is everything that I need to say. I think we're good. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about the absolute mess that was Jerry's epic romance with a married man and what that maybe meant for her and what that means as a writer trying to distill her into a book. Um, it's been a lot of fun, guys. Uh, any further questions, leave them uh, as comments in this video. I can go through and try to answer some of them. You can, of course, tweet at me um, or Facebook. Uh, Twitter's probably better. Um, that's about it. Okay, thank you guys so much. Uh, everyone stay safe, and uh, I will see you all next week. Bye.